Welcome back to Coding Shorts. Today I want to talk to you about some C-sharp fundamental stuff. There's a new feature called Required Members that's made it into C-sharp relatively recently, and I want to discuss how it really works. Because in C-sharp, we're often having to think about what is required or not required, and we're writing code in order to be able to do that. And so to introduce this idea of how required works in classes and records and all those sorts of structural data, let's get started. So unsurprising to anyone who's seen me do this before, we're starting with a Plano console app. Does nothing, we're about to write things to do it, but I'm gonna start with a simple public class and then I'm going to call team. It just has a couple of members. It has a prop for string for the name of the club and prop integer for number of players, right? Super simple. Notice that this isn't nullable, so we're going to have to do something about that. And so we're going to leave this warning just sitting there because we know this is non nullable and required, but how would we go ahead and set it? So we don't have a constructor except for the empty one. So let's go ahead and create my precious Braves and I'll call it a new team. I'll just use the initializer syntax. So name equals Braves. And let's go ahead and say number of players equals 25 on the roster, actually 26. And so while this works, we're still getting that warning about nullability because what we really want to tell it is we need this to be required. And so one often way you'll see this done is with a constructor, right? There's my team, and I'm going to say string name. Then I can just say name equals name, right? I can just do that right thing. All this works out, except that I now need to put Braves in here and not in here. And this adds some complexity to it, and I don't think it reads all that well. What we can do instead, I'm going to comment out the constructor for a minute, is we can use this new keyword, required. So this string is required, but it's not required in that you have to have a constructor. We can actually go back to creating a new team name equal Braves, and it'll work because what required says is that we need to set this value during construction of the class. It's not about it being nullable anymore. We're actually telling it this is something that is required. And if it's not set in the constructor, it needs to be created here using the initialization syntax. But what if we want both methods, right? What if we want to do this and it's required? So if we say Braves here as our constructor, we want to go back that way. Maybe you want to include an empty constructor and this more helpful one that allows you to do that, right? And what's happening is it's going to complain because we're saying we need this required, but we're not setting it in the initialization syntax. We're setting it in the constructor itself. If you do need a constructor to be able to do this, you can use an attribute here that says, sets required members. And we'll need to bring that in from code analysis. And this basically tells the compiler, you don't have to make sure that this is in the initialization syntax because we're setting, in this case, the name there. If we had another property, let's say ticket price, this all works because we can still set that. But what if we said required? The syntax says it needs to be in here, but of course we're not getting any warnings because this sets required members is telling the compiler, trust me, inside of the constructor here, I'm going to set all of the required members. This isn't telling it to look at the body of this and see which ones are set. And so be a little careful with this attribute because it's essentially telling the compiler, don't worry about the required, I'm taking care of it. But if we get rid of the constructors, then instead of setting the name here, we're going to use an implied empty constructor here to say name equals Braves. I'm still not going to like it until we say ticket price equals $89.99, and then it likes it. And we could even get rid of this because it's not required. It's still perfectly legal to have that. And so this notion of adding required on your members helps you write less code and make sure you have to have constructor for all of this. Because this initialization syntax, for me at least, is something that I'm using much more often than I am actual constructors, unless there's something special about it. Constructors are being used a lot by dependency injection, but I'm not using constructor parameters very often with my own just sort of data structures. Hope this has taught you a little bit about how required members work, where you might want to use them. I like it because it no longer requires me to create constructors for required members and just rely more heavily on the initialization syntax. Thanks again for watching. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help us. And this has been Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth.